How y'all doing? I've been kind of second guessing whether or not to record this video because it's it's weird. It's a weird thing to be recording. Somebody recently sent me a video about Irish sex education from the 1980s. I, growing up, I had no sex education in Ireland. <laughs> It explains a lot. The sex education in Ireland basically came down to, are you using Johnny's, are you? Uh, fair play to you. Johnny's are condoms. <laughs> I don't know. But there was very, very little of it. Whenever I see stuff in movies about like kids in school sitting down and watching videos or anything like that, I'm like, that did not happen when I was a kid. Most Irish lads figured out uh, either from their friends and those friends figured out by watching sheep out in a field. <laughs> but since this is from the 1980s, I've, I, I've never seen it. Somebody just emailed it to me. And I thought, okay, we have to we have to record this. If I don't know if this is even going to be worth watching or not, or if I'm even going to be able to make something fun out of this, but we'll see what happens. Because in the 1980s and the 1990s, Ireland was very heavily under the influence of the church. The church had more power than the government, basically. That's, that's since changed. But I'm very curious to see, because this is going to be... Very Catholic. All right, what you got? Lay it on me. Eight o'clock in the morning. Oh Lord. Ireland in the 1980s, where eight-year-olds look like 80-year-olds. They're touching hands. Are they married? <laughs> okay. Sex education. Oh, for girls. So it's not even just sex education, it's sex education specifically for women. Girls, sorry. It says it right there, Sean, come on. Hello, I'm Angela, and over the next few sessions, we're going to be together talking about you growing up, your body, its changes, and a lot more. <laughs> we're going to teach you how to do your taxes, and we're also going to talk about what it means to go vote for the government. Ah, good woman, Angela! Fair play to you, teaching the girls all about it. I'm very worried about what you're going to teach them, though. Everything is based on love. And the person who loves us most of all is God. Okay. So, let's start by asking him to help us to understand about it all. Dear Lord. Oh God, we're going straight into praying. Okay. <laughs> Alright, little did I know that a video about sex education- I mean, I should have guessed it. I, I said that the church had a lot of control over this stuff, but we're, we're a minute in and we're already praying to, to the Lord above. I want to, to invite you to be with us as we talk together about growing up. Because you are the inventor of people. <laughs> you are the one best able to understand us and help us to understand <laughs> and love one another. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> I've often heard God called the creator of the universe, the creator of mankind. I've never heard him called the inventor of people. <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah, God. I invented people. And everyone starts throwing stuff at him like, what's wrong with you? Why did you invent those things? Unit four, sexual intercourse. Wait, where's units one, two, and three? So this is the newlywed couple here and they're showing their love for each other by lovemaking. That's not lovemaking. <laughs> Angela. Do, Angela, do I need to give you the talk? If that's lovemaking, <laughs> they're doing it in front of a child and that's way worse than doing sex outside of love and marriage. Lovemaking just means making each other feel loved. How do you make a person feel loved? No, it doesn't. Well, you give them kisses and hugs and you hold them close. That's true. But between a man and a woman, it's a bit different because when they hold each other really close and give a long kiss and a warm hug, they tell each other that they're beautiful and everything like that. Everything like that. You're beautiful and and sure Jez, everything else as well. I think Irish people back in the 80s were the best about like saying their feelings and expressing their love about things as, as a people. It, it, it was instead of being like, I'm so glad that you're in my life because you make me a better person and I'm very glad that I met you. It was more like, Ash, just go away out there. You have a nice set of legs on you. Also, between a man and a woman, remember, this is the 80s. It was very different. And they also have a bit of a laugh because <laughs> they are the best of friends. <laughs> They, they have the crack, lads. They have a bit of a laugh. As well as all the lovemaking and the sex and all the kissing and the hugs and everything. 
Actually, the grand bit of laugh. Grand bit of fun together when they're watching Coronation Street in the telly. In a very short time, because they're so close, the man feels his penis becoming erect <laughs> and straight, hard. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm laughing. It's I'm just contextualizing everything in my head. I'm not being a 12 year old where I heard penis erect and just start giggling, okay? No! <laughs> Bell of maturity right now. I just love that this is a video that they showed people in Ireland. Hold on, I need I need to get a drink right now before we go any further, because this is about to get heavy. <coughs> All right, okay. Here we go, Angela, lay it on to me. What happens when a penis gets erect? And the sperm coming down into it, like it did when he had a wet dream. Okay. Now, while the sperm is coming into the man's penis, the woman's body is getting ready to receive the sperm. Oh, no. It's amazing, you know, how God made it. The woman feels her vagina becoming kind of slippery inside. Oh, no! No! Oh, don't use that word! Oh, God! I did not want to hear Angela say the word slippery! Ew! Oh, my God. This is so fucking weird. <laughs> oh god, keep going Angela, keep her lid! So that the penis can easily slip in and out. No trouble. <laughs> no trouble so at all at all. he slips his penis into her vagina. <laughs> I'm not being a 12 year old where I heard penis erect and just start giggling, okay? No! <laughs> Bell of maturity right now. Oh, you scientific, like, anatomy. You scientific pictures or something. I don't want to see Angela do this! <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh, see, even Siri agrees. So he slips his penis into her vagina, uh -huh. gives her the sperm, then she has the sperm, then the penis slips out, and that's all. That's all. That's all it is, guys. It's just like a relay race. You know when you're running and you give your the other guy the baton and then he runs to the finish line with it? That's all it is. You just give them the sperm, they take the sperm, and that's it. My god, Angela, god forbid you have any fun with it. God forbid that anything else happens in the middle of it. And that's called sexual intercourse. No trouble. What you described was not sexual intercourse. What you described was Amazon dropping off a package. Some people call it having sex. <laughs> so the man passes the sperm to the woman, and now his sperm is in her. <laughs> Maybe you're wondering, if a mistake could be made and a man could pass water instead of semen. <laughs> I, I get it, okay? This was meant for kids to watch to learn about their bodies and everything. But, God, I'm just imagining so many different scenarios right now from when I was a child in Ireland. And just, oh, I mean, knowing so many women in town who remind me of this lady. Oh, God, it's just so weird. I'm having this, like, culture clash with myself. But that can't happen. Because there's a valve which closes to stop the urine coming. There you go. sexual intercourse is taking place. There you go. It's amazing, you know, how God made it. Now, possibly you're saying to yourself, oh, I'll never do that. It's awful. <laughs> Because, you know, when you hear about it first, it sounds very strange. Yeah. But God has made it really lovely. An exciting and pleasant feeling. The ending of that is actually one of the better aspects of this entire video. Like, the reassuring aspect of it. There's no fear-mongering around it. That's what I was worried when it came to a video like this. That they'd be like, you don't do it. And there was a lot less of that. They didn't harp on about like, but only when you're married. Which, again, I was very worried about, so... Some of that stuff at the end, like talking about the valve and everything, yeah, it should be... It should be scientific, I think. I don't know, it's... it's been a while since I was a kid, I don't fucking know. No! 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 Stop! Why?! I don't want it! Jesus Christ! Also, she did not give... <laughs> the person with the penis in this scenario... Any sort of credit. Just... Just... He puts it in, 
the sperm comes out and then he takes it out and he shakes it all about. And then he does the hokey pokey and he turns around. My, <laughs> that poor person lasted two seconds in this woman's mind. It's amazing you know how God made it. Oh, there's a part two. There she That's is! Angela! Yes! Staring out the window, looking at the cattle. I <laughs> wonder when Jim's going to bring in the sheep. In the last lesson, you'll remember, I spoke to you about your heart growing up. Remember? No. Now I'm going to talk to you about your body growing up. Oh, no. Oh, because it was love. Love making. It was all about love and the heart. I get it, Angela. You know what? Kids are smarter than I am anyway. So let's start with the basics. We all know that girls and boys' bodies are different. And that's fine. Yes. Maybe you laugh when I mention that because you may feel quite shy about it. No, Angela. I'm a 30-year-old man watching this. <laughs> I don't know if I should be. With a girl, down between her legs, there are three openings. You use the front opening when you go to the toilet and pass water. The back opening is for when you go to the toilet and do the big job. <laughs> I'm gonna say that for every time I go to take a shit from now on. Sorry guys, I have to go do the big job. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to the bathroom to do contracting work. Sorry, I have some architectural designs that I need to pass over in the bathroom. I'm going to go do the big job. And there's a center opening between those two, which is called the vagina. That's for the little job. Now, today we're going to look at the boys. Do you like that? <laughs> ew, 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 stop! No, I didn't like that at all, at all, at all, at all. Sometimes when you're married first, you do it a bit awkwardly and then you have to laugh together because <laughs> you, you don't know everything yet. But you learn together. It's very automatic and natural and happy. And the couple you look might like a try serial killer. it in a different position. And one might say to the other, Oh, that's a much better way. That's much more comfortable. Wow. When you hear about it first, it sounds very strange. But God has made it really lovely. Where's this music An coming exciting from? exciting and pleasant feeling. Oh, God. When you're joined together like one person and you love each other so much, he has made it a really lovely feeling. I mean, supposing God made it an awful feeling, then nobody would do it. And then we wouldn't have any babies. None. None whatsoever. No babies. But he's made it this special, exciting feeling. So much so that people are tempted to do it before they're married. Well, that's just an ordinary human temptation. But God doesn't want people to have sexual intercourse <laughs> before they're married. There it is. And you remember, he's the inventor and he knows what's best. Yes, everyone who has invented something knows exactly what's best for the invention that they've made. No, 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 not again, Angela, stop! Oh my god. That was even more awkward than I thought it was gonna be. I, I, I... There was a couple of glimmers of actual, genuine, good information in there. And the way of presenting it was actually... normal. <laughs> I knew, I knew the whole... God doesn't want you to do it beforehand, so wait till marriage. I knew that that aspect had to come in somewhere, but it took the very last sentence of part two, which I is much better than I expected. I'm trying to think now if I had seen these when I was growing up, because I, I was the 90s, so it wasn't that long after. I don't think a whole lot would have changed, but I don't think that that would have helped. I don't think that that would have done anything. I'm also shaking this around in my hand right now as I'm talking about this, and now it, it means something completely different. Now, I, I'll, I'm just gonna put that down. What is crazy, though, is to think about how much has changed since then. Like, the 80s were- it's not that long ago. But so much in the world has changed since then. So many mentalities, like, there was a lot of that stuff about a man and a woman falling in love and getting married, and then having babies and all that, but now, like, same-sex marriage is legal in Ireland, which is really cool. And there's so many different types of people in the world now today, where, I mean, the the basics are are all there but there's so much like 
the world and sexual identity and sexual orientation and everything is so much more expansive and the spectrum has grown so much since then. But like I said, I never got taught any of that stuff when I was in school. There was no video to watch. There was nothing, nobody, a priest came in and talked to us about stuff at one point, but it wasn't sex. It was probably just fear mongering us as always. Anyway, that's that video. Um, I don't know why I made this. I'm very glad that I did because that was hilarious. And I'm very glad that somebody sent it to me. I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent it in, but I'm really glad that you did because that got a good chuckle out of me. It, it, God, there was something so nostalgic about it, about like the clothing and everything. I just, I feel like I've met that woman in real life before or countless amounts of women in Ireland at that time who all looked and acted the same. I'm very proud to be Irish. But I'm glad that Ireland has gotten a lot more progressive over the years because we were once a very staunchly oppressed, uh, a repressed culture where we felt like we couldn't talk about our, our mentalities, our mental health, let alone anything like this. We were a very prudish culture. So I'm glad as the years have gone on, Ireland has kind of opened up and gotten a bit better at this sort of stuff because Lord knows we needed a change. So good job, Ireland. Proud of you. You're growing up. You're getting bigger. Now, it's time we have the talk. It's time we talk about your John Willie. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the episode here. Bell of ending. Uh, bell of smash that like button, please. Thank you. Otherwise, I will. it will make it feel like I made this video for no reason and feel very bad about it. So your likes will really determine if I've made a productive amount of time to, what am I saying? I don't know, I'm distracted by cat hair. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm gonna need something a lot stronger than this after that.